A little while ago, before filming one of these videos, I accidentally bumped my tripod and slightly moved it. When I imported my footage into Final Cut Pro, my A-roll was crooked. Not a huge deal, but I do like to have the desk in my frame perfectly straight. So I did what I normally do when I need to level out the horizon in my shot. I turned on the horizon overlay, selected the transform tool, moved the entire frame up so the horizon is in the middle, leveled it out, moved the frame back down, and scaled up my image to fill my frame. There has to be a better way to do this. Actually, when I thought about it, there's a number of basic functions in Final Cut Pro that are either missing or unnecessarily complicated. This inspired me to make a set of tools to make leveling out the horizon and many other essential functions faster and easier. We call it the Final Cut Pro Essentials Toolkit, and I'm very excited to share this with you today. When you first download the Final Cut Pro Essentials Toolkit, before you can use it, you have to install it on your computer. This is very important, so pay attention here. Open the downloaded folder and locate the Final Cut Pro Essentials Toolkit installer. Double click on this file and in the pop-up window, click the install button. This is all you have to do. The installer tool does the rest for you. Actually, this whole plugin has been designed so it doesn't need instructions. If you know how to use Final Cut Pro, you already know how to use this plugin. After installation, when you open up Final Cut Pro, you'll find all the tools included in the Titles and Generators browser and the Effects browsers. Let's first take a look at the Horizon Guides. They look very similar to Final Cut Pro's Horizon Overlay, except the two on-screen control handles. With these, as you may have guessed, you can move these guides. This alone makes it quite a bit more versatile, but we built a few more features that might come in pretty handy. If you look over in the Titles Inspector, each guide has a number of controls. You can turn them on and off, change the color, and even adjust the width to make these more visible, or if you want to, less distracting. Under this, we have the position mini sliders. We built these on a zero to one scale, so if you need to place your guide right in the middle of your frame, you just enter 0.5 for a value, and your guide is exactly in the middle. Doesn't matter what your project resolution is. Want to mark a quarter of your screen? Just enter 0.25. Third of a screen, 0.33. You get the point. And if one vertical and one horizontal guide isn't enough for you, we've included one more of each. You just have to turn them on in the Titles Inspector. We've also included another set of alignment guides you can use. These are very similar to the Horizon guides, but are designed more to help you align items in your frame. Besides having the ability to move these with on-screen controls, you can also use this handle to rotate your guides and even adjust the width of these lines with on-screen controls. Next, let's take a look at the To Do Title preset. This is one of my favorite tools, and I even assigned this as my default title because I use it so much. When you're working on your project and need to leave a note to remember something, you just add a To Do Title. The text comes in a bright yellow box to make it stand out, and as you type your note, the box adjusts with the text. You can move this note around with the on-screen controls, and if you need to reference a specific part of your frame, just go to the inspector window and turn on the handle. When you're ready to go back and deal with your notes or to-dos, just skim your timeline and the yellow background boxes pop right out at you. Another thing you can do is go to the timeline index and type to-do in the search box. Select all these clips and change a video roll to a different color to make these to-do titles easier to find. I'm not sure if there's a way to automate this, but if I ever figure it out, I'll make sure I include it in a free update. Next, let's take a look at the YouTube end screens title. In my experience, the best way to keep people watching on YouTube is by pointing them towards another video at the end. This is fine if you're watching this on mobile or a computer, but not all platforms support end screens, so you just end up looking weird. You can fix this with an end screen title. It comes with two video drop zones and a subscribe drop zone. You can use these to add a thumbnail of your next video or even add a video clip. And each one of these can be turned off. Every drop zone comes with an on-screen control to move it around. But as you probably already know, YouTube doesn't let you place these at the edges of your screen. So just like YouTube, I've added limits to where you can place these. I have a couple more title presets here that are pretty self-explanatory. An adjustment layer and a vertical video fill layer. This is for when you need to use vertical video in a conventional project. Adding this title over your video clip gets rid of the black bars and adds a blurred background. 
You can then use a combination of the on-screen controls and controls in the inspector to fine-tune the appearance of this effect. Next, let's take a look at shapes. The Final Cut Pro Essentials Toolkit comes with four basic shapes that are fully customizable. No, Final Cut Pro does come with a built-in shape generator, but honestly, it sucks. Let's take a rectangle with an outline, for example. The only way to change the size of this rectangle is to use the Transform tool. But when you do, all you're doing is stretching this out, and it looks like garbage. The shapes that come with this plugin, on the other hand, can easily be resized. You can adjust the height, width, corner roundness, rotation, and a bunch more parameters. You can even add a few keyframes and animate it. Quite a bit more versatile than the built-in shapes generator. And last, but not least in the titles category, you get five split screen presets. These are super simple to use. Just pick the configuration you need and add video clips or still images to the drop zones. Adjust the image framing and the background color for an easy split screen effect. And if you don't want borders between your images, just bring each drop zone scale back up to 100% and square the edges for a seamless split screen effect. Let's move to the effects browser and see what we get here. First up is the picture in picture effect. This is nothing fancy, just a simple picture in picture. Add this effect to the clip you want inside your picture in picture window and use the on screen controls to adjust the position and framing of your window. Fine tune the appearance in the inspector window to make it your own. Simple, but for someone like me, and I bet a lot of others, super useful. The stroke effect is another effect I can't believe doesn't come with Final Cut Pro. It's so simple. It just adds an outline to a shape. So if you have an icon or a logo with a transparent background, this allows you to add an outline to it. Even if you have a video clip that's cropped or masked, the stroke effect, once again, lets you outline it. Why it's not included in Final Cut Pro is beyond me. These are some of the tools included in the Final Cut Pro Essentials Toolkit, but that's not it. There's a bonus. We all know organizer media makes the rest of the process exponentially easier. And if you use folders to organize your media before you import it, the folders turn into smart collections in Final Cut Pro. But who wants to make a complicated folder structure for each project? Well, now you don't have to. When you first downloaded the Final Cut Pro Essentials Toolkit, in the original folder, besides the installer, there's a couple of shortcut files. Open the video projects template and add this to your shortcuts. Before you start your next project, run the shortcut. It'll first ask you for your project name. Enter it and click Done. Select your storage location and click Done once again. You'll see a new folder in the selected location and inside this folder is a basic folder structure you can use to organize your media, your Final Cut Pro libraries, projects, and more. I use this for all my videos and to make the shortcut easier to find, I've added it to my dock. You can also run the shortcut from your services menu. The other shortcut included with this pack is a custom folder template you can modify to fit your organizing needs. I'll do a follow-up video probably next week to show you exactly how to customize this shortcut. We've put a lot of thought, time, and effort into building the Final Cut Pro Essentials Toolkit and it's made my Final Cut Pro experience considerably better. I'm sure it'll do the same for you. I'll have it linked in the description below or you can just scan this code right here. Try it out. You're gonna love it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.